Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm doing a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. In this video, I'm going to talk about outputs of devices such as ICs. Now, I mentioned in my last video about open collect outputs. I thought I'd go in a bit more detail about that because I think I need to be explained because it's quite an important aspect. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've been enjoying the video series so far. And subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And click the bell icon to get notifications. Let's say you have A and I C. I'm just going to draw it as a block. I've left plenty of space, you'll see why in a second. And let's say you're switching this IC with whatever circuit. Right, so you've got a signal coming in, and that could be going from a high low state, it could be a square wave or something like that, right? Or whatever, it doesn't really matter what it is, and I've drawn it awfully badly. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. You've got some kind of signal going to an IC. And you have an output coming out of that IC, and that could be also a square wave, right? I'll just draw this one bigger so you can see it. So you're coming in, coming out. Uh, maybe this is a buffer or amplifier or something like that. It could be an inverter even, it could be inverting it. There's all sorts of ICs you could be using this for. could even be an op amp or something like that. Let's say you've got the square wave coming out. Now, what if you have two circuits connected to the same point? For some reason, it doesn't really matter what the reason is. You may need to have another block over here, which also does the same thing. All right? You may need an output from this block, and that will actually be joined on to here. These will be connected together. What happens then? Well, if they're both getting exactly the same signal and they're both exactly the same chip, well, it's kind of pointless, you'll be okay. However, if this chip here is getting, say, instead of a square wave, it's getting a triangle wave, that will be trying to output a triangle wave if it's exactly the same chip, all right? Well, what's going to happen? You're going to have clashes between the two, and if they're joined together, you're going to have some kind of weird problem. You may be trying to do wave shaping or something, who knows what you're doing, right? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to go into that. That's not, you know, way beyond the scale of what we're trying to do. What I'm trying to explain here is that you have two chips putting different signals out, they'll be fighting each other. Now, if this chip is a push-pull transistor type, which means you've got a transistor up here, transistor down here, let's just draw this out, that's going to ground that side, these are linked together, and this side is going to plus 5 volts, for example, inside the chip, this is within the chip itself, all right? And these could be getting whatever signal they'll be doing, being individual circuits running each one. Right, so that's like the output block. So that would be the output pin from the chip, just here. So that's the pin you would connect to on the output of the chip. If it's a push-pull design like this, then it's either going to be negative, 0 volts, or 5 volts, or, you know, close to it. You're going to get some losses through the actual switching of the transistors, so it might be 0.3 and 4.6 or something like that. You know, like, it's quite normal to see slight variations. Depends on the chip, it might be less than that. It might be 4 volts or 3.6 volts, depending on the chip design and how they've actually got it switching. So you've got either 0 volts or 5 volts coming out, and if you had that design in these two chips here, you've got a problem, because they're going to be shorting each other out between these transistors. So one could be at 0 volts, the other one could be at 5 volts, and you're going to be going 0 volts to 5 volts across those two outputs, shorting them out. Bad news. Bad for the chips, bad for longevity, awful design, right? Bad for the power supplies, what have you, okay? Which is why there's open collector outputs. And it's actually a bit like this, this one here. So instead of having two transistors like this, you just have one transistor, which is an NPN type. This would be an NPN and PNP up here, by the way. That would be a triangle there, triangle there. Anyway, you can't really see that because I've drawn it too small. But this would be an NPN transistor, and that would be your output here, right? And then you've got the drive signal. So that would be your ground or zero volts or whatever the hell it is, right? So that would be your zero volt rail. Let's call it zero volt rail rather than ground, okay? In this situation, this is an open collector output, effectively. So what happens is when this is turned on, this will be pulled to ground, right? So this output is either going to be floating or zero volt, which means you can actually put multiple together side by side perfectly safely because they're all at the same potential. Different chips, right? Different chip here, different chip here, separate chips, okay? You can power all them up just fine because if that's on, that's low. If that's on, that's low. If that's off, it's floating. Doesn't matter. If that one's on and that's off, it's going to be at zero volts. So it's going to be zero volts or floating. Now, the way that this has then worked in order to make it actually function, so you've got different logic states, is they've put on a pull up resistor, whatever that may be, whatever the voltage is, but to five volts would be quite common. What that means is that if either of those are off, this point here would be five volts. If either of those are on, it would be zero volts, which gives you the same result as that. But this means you can put multiple devices in parallel and not worry about it. This is quite commonly used on like bus type situations where you've got multiple chips in parallel with each other 
and they're off a bus, like a RAM bus or something like that. You may find there's multiple chips which are in parallel. I'm not going to get into RAM buses right now, it's quite an advanced subject. You do have multiple chips in parallel and they've got separate driver circuits where it will switch between each chip and then each chip will output something. And based on which chip it is, the output could depend on um, the RAM state, for example, you know, what's in, what's in it, if it's a RAM chip or EEPROM or something like that, it'll be a what's in memory. Something like that anyway, some kind of memory chip. That's what open collectors are for. They're open outputs. If they're turned off, they float, so it doesn't matter what else is going on in the circuitry. If they're turned on or active, that pulls them down. Hopefully I've covered that and explained that well enough. So it's either, you know, in this circuit topology, which is not an open collector, it will short out supply if you put two chips in parallel. If they're open collector, you can put as many chips in parallel as you like. It doesn't matter, because whichever one is on, it'll be the one that takes control of the line. And if they're all on, it doesn't matter, because they're all doing the same potential. So I hope you found that interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and click like if you like the video series. I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye.